This video is about the floors in Keyboard Render Kit. I'm going to start this video with an important point I'd like to make. Care K lighting and the default floor are set up in a way to influence your color as little as possible. This also could be considered somewhat boring. Naturally, there would be a temptation to select the floor and change the tone or color to add more appeal. Resist that urge, unless you feel as though you're improving the fidelity. Let's illustrate the problem. To properly show this, I'm going to set the uh, keycap color to white. Okay, now I'll grab the, the back background plane and change the color to a nice red. It, instant pop. It looks very vibrant, except for one problem. If you look carefully, you'll see that there's red washing up on the sides of the keycaps. If I turn off the visibility to camera, you can see a definite pink hue coming off of the off of the floor there. We don't want that. I'm not saying you can't have a colorful background, but let's change the way we would achieve that. Okay, the main way to do that would be to use Blender's Shadow Catcher feature. Any objects in Blender could be made into a Shadow Catcher by enabling it in the visibility options right here. Now if we render, this is showing through to the world. And in order to get some color in there, we need to edit the world's color. Let's take a moment to look at how the world shader is constructed. We have a mix shader here. What it says is, if the background is directly visible to the camera, then the pixel would take on a gray color. All else will be the black, as in uh, no light. If you uh, decide to use an HDR to light your scene, you would either plug it in here or uh, just bypass all of this and go with the background straight to the world output. Let's go ahead and render our scene. I'll speed it up. Now we can take a reading from the front of one of our keycaps. Here it says the red value is 0.23. Okay, now let's go ahead and give our world a color. Instant pop, there we go. And you can tell right away that there's little or no red on the front of the keycaps. But let's double check. Okay, now we'll take another reading. And we have the same 0.23 reading on the front here, which means there was no uh, no influence from the world onto our keycaps. That's one method. Now let's look at another. But before that, I'd like to point out that I've included a shadow catcher plane uh, in the floors and instead of switching your floor light gray over to a shadow catcher you can just use that. Uh, both of them share exactly the same material so you'll look in here and see floor light gray on on either one they're they're both the same. Uh, just that one is a shadow catcher and one isn't. Okay, let's go ahead and reset our scene by uh, setting the gray back and also disabling Shadow Catcher. Now, the first thing we need to do is uh, make a duplicate of the light gray floor. And we also want to make a duplicate of the material on it. And then we need to uh, set the uh, original light gray to be invisible to the camera and the new one to be uh, only visible to the camera and we can set a color we'll choose a, a similar red 
and uh, let's have a look at the rendered view. Okay, there we go. Now this method uh, works very, very much the same, but uh, uses two planes instead. Uh, the advantage to that is, uh, should we decide to go for uh, some sort of wood texture, uh, we can also do the same thing here and make it uh, only visible to camera. And then the light won't be affecting um, the color of our keycaps. Uh, one more thing while we're talking about the uh, while we're talking about the floors and the shadow catcher, I'd like to demonstrate that uh, you can also add a solid background or any background to once you have the shadow catcher enabled, you can add uh, add a background in post in your uh, image editor of choice by setting film transparent. And now we have a transparent background. And when you render this out and save it, uh, you'll still have your shadows in there. Uh, and you can just overlay it on, on anything else. Um, with that, let's have a look at, um, let's have a look at some of the other woods that are included, uh, well, floors that are included in the kit. Um, I've seen a couple of people have fun with this. I threw it in. I threw it in there not really knowing what what people would do. Um, it's a simple uh, Voronoi texture. Um, let's go ahead and tile it a bit more. And uh, this controls your thickness. But we can switch it over to uh, other shapes and, and do really nifty things with it. Uh, you could even uh, edit this this color ramp and add more, add more to it. So for example, if I uh, decide to copy this over here, we can basically have another, uh, another diamond inside the first diamond. And uh, let's try, let's try something else here. Uh, there we go, we have circles. And uh, I expect I expect people to have a lot of fun with this one. Okay, this is a, a plain black, uh, slightly lumpy looking uh, background. And uh, the typical floor like gray here, made to uh, influence your colors as little as possible. Okay, um, and the sands, I've been having a lot of fun with the sands lately, especially sinking boards into the sands. Uh, what we can do with this is if you open this up and uh, you decide that uh, the sand has no volume and if you decide to do something with it you can actually uh, switch that over to a displacement and you plug uh, directly from the uh, distance here into a displaced node and into displacement and in order to make that work we need to also go into the modifier and add a subdivision with uh, a higher level of uh, subdivisions in the simple mode if you want to keep it a square shape. But yeah, the, these can actually be uh, little peaks and stuff here. Same with uh, sand too. This is this is probably my favorite here. Um, and of course, there's all the woods. There's a um, I think I demonstrated this one in another video, so I won't, I won't do it again. You have all your uh, tiling options here and your seed and uh, the wood scale. So should you decide to have a smaller pattern on it, you can, you can do that without affecting the boards. Uh, and then the plank variation, so um, how wobbly these wood planks are. And then I added another option here for the size of the gap in between them. Uh, let's just glance at a couple of the other woods. Here's a uh, washed out gray, a, a sort of the modern look. Uh, and then a really light. This looks better when it's rendered. Um, it's more like a pale, um, pale pine color. Uh, and then uh, wood floor, which uh, right here on this on the, the video we transformed into uh, wood five, which I really like. Uh, pretty nice. 
Um, well, that's it for floors, I think. Um, more to come. I'll, I'll add more floors in here as I dream them up. <laughs> All right, well, uh, see you in the next video.